A Link to the Past surely has some interesting and memorable bosses. Some are annoying, some are hard, and some are fun. We're the ones to try for us, and here's our boss ranking. Of course, at the bottom we have Moldor. He's just so annoying! He is probably the boss you have to face the most times in one game. Not because he's so hard that he'll kill you, but because he knocks you down the floor if you bump into him. And therefore, you have to start the fight all over again. But there's a good feeling about him, and that's when you finally defeat him. Oh, and one more thing. Why in the world is this worm at the very top of a tower? How did it even get there? Argus surely is a weird one. It's a jellyfish covered in something that I and my brother used to call meatballs. We really like multiple faces in a boss fight, and this one has two. The first one is the tougher one, as he likes to send out his meatballs in circles, hoping to land a hit on you. When you're done with him, he jumps down into the water and just flows around in very high speed. Just use your sword to slash him, and you'll eventually defeat him. The first dungeon boss in A Link to the Past has something that's really rare in the Legend of Zelda series. You're not fighting just one particular enemy, but six! It's really easy though. When they are more than one, they're not aggressive in any way, and just jump around the circles and into the wall, giving you many opportunities to use your bow or your sword to defeat them. As soon as you've taken down five of them, the last one will turn red and start to jump on you. It's actually a fun boss to start off with. The boss in Skullwoods. This fight can be very tough. You always have to pay attention to which direction the floor is moving, where Mothiala is, when and which way the blade traps are running, while avoiding Mothiala's attacks. Definitely not an easy boss for everyone. Even if the boss is tough and gives you a challenge, like we normally enjoy, you just have to ask why we are fighting a moth. You la. Its appearance and name isn't really something we look at as awesome, but we can't take anything away from the fight itself. I always enjoyed this boss, especially until I finally found out why we were told to find the Ice Rod so early in the game. I never knew that it was effective against these three wormish creatures. Once I tried the Ice Rod, they were really easy to beat. But following my old way to defeat him, by using my sword, it'll always be as fun and long as it always used to be when I was younger. So that's where the credit for this boss is. A pretty fun boss. It consists of two faces. But... What's annoying about Cold Stare is that you won't get to the second phase without enough magic to get him out of the ice. Unless we're just retarded and haven't found out another way yet. But as we understand it, you have to die and start the fight over if you run out of magic before you can get him out of the ice. However, if you actually do get him out, you're in for a fair fight. We just wanted to rank him this high because he's unique with the Always make sure you have enough magic if you want to fight me, Palsy. This boss is really disgusting, but not really hard. Why he is a boss so late in the game is questionable. All you have to do is destroy the eyeballs jumping at you, while avoiding the lightning coming out of the biggest one there. When there are four eyes remaining just sitting there, the biggest one will come out and you'll just have to hit him with your sword many times. This phase is real simple, much like the Argus fights, but for some reason, we like this one better than many others in the game. A 
Oh, this one is memorable. Finding a woman locked down in the basement of this dungeon made me think, Alright, I'm gonna rescue another chick, just like with Zelda. And for some reason, without remembering why I did it for the first time, I bring her into that room with the light flashing from the ceiling because of the bomb I threw on the floor above this room, making the sun shine through. Suddenly, she turns into this white-clothed, red-skinned monster shooting lasers and fireballs out of his eyes. Now, this fight is pretty intense. When you hit him enough times, his head will float around by itself, while another one comes out of the shirt. This continues until two heads are floating around while there's a third one on the shirt. Constantly avoiding two heads shooting fireballs in addition to the one you're already trying to attack makes this one a very fun or frustrating boss, which is sure to be remembered. The boss in Turtle Rock. I remember having so much trouble with this one back in the days when I didn't know how to upgrade my Master Sword. I always thought it was tough, but when we played it together last year, it was surprisingly easy. I guess it's difficult to vary as much when it comes to your equipment. Of course, when we first tried him for the recording of this video, we forgot the ice rod. The fire and ice rod are essential when it comes to beating this boss. You need the right equipment to fight this boss, which is fine, but we also just love how he is. How he looks, he's just awesome! The originator of the Dead Man's Volley, which has been used so many times later in the series. For some reason, we put both Aghanim fights together. They are very similar, and Aghanim can take more hits in the second encounter than in the first. The only difference is his clones, which of course makes it harder for you. The first fight is really, really easy. Just hit those balls back at him with your sword, avoid the blue things, and when his shadow appears up in the middle of the room, go to one of the sides to avoid his lightning attack. The second encounter is of course the better one. His clones attack at the same time and you have to avoid the other's spells while attacking the original. However, if you're lucky and good enough to do so, you can use the clones of spells to hurt the original one. As you can see, the last hits on him were very easy to land. This masked monster is so freaking awesome. It looks really cool, and the fight is both fun and tough. When we played this together, I was surprised over how easy it is to die against him. Why did I die so often? Because I forgot about his tail! I was always avoiding those fireballs, never noticed the tail moving faster, and then got whipped afterwards. To beat this boss, you have to use the magic hammer to break his mask, and then use a sword or bow to hit the green mark on his forehead. I've always loved the fight, and especially how great this boss looks. In addition, the fight is a bit harder than I thought it would be, even though I've beaten him many times before. Of course, the final boss. And this boss fight is actually very good. You have to concentrate on more things here than you usually do in other final boss fights in the series. You have to avoid his trident that he throws around, his fireballs circling around, and make sure you don't fall down after he removes some of the tiles on the floor. After this, he puts the fire out of the two torches in the room, which you have to light up if you want to kill him. Hit him with the sword so that he freezes, use your silver arrows, light up the torches again and repeat. If you have the gold colored sword, this fight will be exciting enough. The lesser level of your sword, the longer the fight. Like when I still had the master sword the first time I encountered him. Great final boss.